Good evening, viewers. You're welcome to the concluding part of the television documentary. We started last week on the third annual ICAO World Aviation Forum with a theme, Financing the Development of Aviation Infrastructure. They also indicated that the initiative is being called a No Country Left Behind initiative. A lot of people converged from all over the world. Aviation stakeholders brainstorm to see how we can ensure the proper financing of aviation infrastructure to be able to move this industry forward. I learned a great deal from it. Sit back and take a look. The third annual ICAO World Aviation Forum, IWA3, concluded in Abuja, Nigeria, with more than 500 high-level participants from governments, development banks and international organizations, placing renewed global focus on aviation development and infrastructure modernization priorities. The second day of the forum was so engaging and focused specifically on financing challenges facing aviation infrastructure and capacity development in Africa. The objective of IWAF 2017 being to identify needs, facilitate the funding and financing required to accelerate the implementation of national civil aviation global standards and policies in support of the No Country Left Behind NCLB initiative and to share information and best practices with a view to ensuring sufficient resources for sustainable aviation development. The development of aviation infrastructure and investment required for the African aviation sector is currently not well covered by the Programme for Infrastructure Development in Africa, PIDA. The rich solutions-oriented discussion here in the series is a milestone towards the journey to the establishment of a financial framework for aviation infrastructure development in Africa that will be integrated into the AU and the PIDA. As investment in quality aviation infrastructure development requires simultaneous enhancement in human capacity, they are directly linked and completely dependent on each other. Top officials from financial institutions in Africa are here to discuss. Ms. Iyabo O. Soshino, Secretary General, African Civil Aviation Commission, AFCAC. Mr. Seymour Gray Johnson, Head, Regional Integration, Infrastructure and Trade, New Partnership for Africa's Development at NEPAD. Dr. Usman Mahgoub El Fiel, advisor to the Director General, Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa. Co moderators are Honorable Mr. Agri Henry Bagiri, Minister of State Transport, Uganda, and Honorable Ms. Cecilia Abena Dapa, Minister of Aviation, Ghana. And since this dialogue today is uh, to explore the investment opportunities of aviation infrastructure in Africa, I thought that would be my opening statement that there is infrastructure deficit, and so there is a lot of opportunity for uh, investment in Africa in the area of uh, infrastructure, aviation infrastructure. Uh, it's also a truth that banks especially and lending agencies are willing to lend to projects to investors, but they will only do that if those projects are viable. Going forward, what do we need to do? Certainly, we need to, we're going to review PIDA next year. So what we need to do is to make sure that the issue of aviation is taken seriously and we should start looking at uh, country master plans in terms of aviation and this has to cascade into the regional economic community and then we put it together into the next PIDA phase which is 2020-2030. Now very quickly my second point, in terms of financing, the NEPAD agency for the past 36 months has really been looking at how do we move PIDA pro projects. So hoping that aviation as a subsector will join the PIDA family, we can look at three streams. We have the Move Africa, which was already, already highlighted. 
We've just launched a new campaign called the 5% Agenda. And what the 5% Agenda does is to get our pension funds and our sovereign wealth funds, which actually, if you capitalize the resources they have together, is about 600 billion. I mean, of course, the pension funds vary from country to country. So in terms of domestic financing, there is provision for that. And the 5% Agenda looks at how the average African pension fund can now increase investments into African's infrastructure from 1.5%, which is the average, to 5% dealing with assets under management. So in terms of domestic financing, there is a vehicle to look at how we can finance the aviation subsector. Uh, our bank is ready area to contribute uh, in, in, in that effort. And in fact, we are not alone in financing uh, airport uh, infrastructure in African countries. We are also partnering with uh, the Arab Coordination Group uh, those who are operating in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, including the Islamic Development Bank, the Saudi Fund, Abu Dhabi Fund, and the Kuwait Fund. So we are really a group. We can we used to come as a group in financing projects. So this is also an opportunity for PIDA to, to, uh, to tap on. And we will be really uh, uh, ready to see how can we uh, be involved in uh, financing projects as well as the technical assistance for the soft part of it. Uh, um, our bank can also extend finance in form of grants uh, for training and uh, for uh, uh, transferring expertise from one country to another country and also for uh, providing expert services. So all these could be packaged and also uh, uh, to study the way forward where uh, Badia and the Arab uh, Coordination Group can come into contact with SPIDA and also to implement whatever projects that might be, uh, what be decided on. When we said that funding was available, it is available in Africa. And as we said also, packaging is very important for the banks to be able to, because it's the packaging that determines whether a project is bankable or not. And I thought I should let you know that my organization has the responsibility to drive the, sing, the, the, the Yamusukuru decision as well as the single African air transport market. And when we sat down and looked at what could be done, we saw the enormity of what was needed because we realized that capacity development that we've been talking about was very important. But really, grounds have to be prepared and for both projects and the capacity development. For the cost development, really, what we need is really, uh, I mean, uh, 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 to, to know exactly what are the needs of those countries should be explicit in, in some sort of uh, technical system document that could be presented to the, to the banks. And uh, we have been also uh, active in that area, uh, uh, of the area of training, of uh, uh, providing expertise, on also uh, 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 sharing knowledge and expertise from country to another. This could be financed, and we have been doing that through grants. Uh, to, to, to African countries. Again here, this is a window where countries can tap on uh, regarding the soft uh, aspects, soft skills, which I agree, as uh, have been already said, that it is a prerequisite for uh, bankable projects. It's a prerequisite for successful implementation of any project that could be uh, uh, undertaken. We need to really look at capacity building and capacity development. And of course, NEPAD agency will work closely with the African Union Commission, with AFCAC, to make sure we have a comprehensive capacity program that addresses regional capacities and also uh, continental capacities. Thank you. I have the pleasure of speaking with a lady that has made us proud, not only in Nigeria, but entire Africa. She happened to be the Secretary General of Africa Civil Aviation Commission, AFCAC, Ms. Iyabo Shoshina. You're welcome, my sister. What would you say had been the, an eye-opener to you? Um, to me, it's the eye-opener is that um, African states are not aware of the potential within their continent. They are not aware that there is a lot of funding available for infrastructure projects. They are not aware that they can take advantage of such uh, funding. That has been an eye-opener for me. 
Participants representing member states, international and regional organizations, the industry, the donor community, as well as multilateral development banks and other financial institutions, underscored that institutional, legal and regulatory frameworks, together with effective monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, should be established in order to encourage greater investment and accommodate the complex nature of project finance transactions. They also agreed to work together to showcase the benefits of aviation and obtain related buy-ins from aviation, development and financial stakeholders. I have the pleasure of speaking with a gentleman that sits at top of the International Civil Aviation Organization. He is actually the president in council and his name is Dr. Olumiwa Bennett Aliu. You're welcome, Dr. Thank you, madam. A no country left behind event. Mm. What informed this? Well, no country left behind is an initiative that I introduced to ICAO when I became the president. And in essence, what I, we are saying is that all of our member states should implement the ICAO standards for safety, security, and efficiency of international air transport at the same level. And under that initiative, we provide the support that is required for our member states, particularly the developing nations, through training and capacity building. Technical assistance, we have our regional offices that are working with the member states to provide the necessary training in this regard. Um, and there's been tremendous improvement in aviation safety. In Africa, for example, for 20, 2015 and 2016, there were no fatal accidents. This is the result of specific programs under that initiative that were introduced for African states to assist them in the area of aviation safety oversight, aviation security and facilitation, training and capacity building. The current process is to include infrastructure development under the No Country Left Behind initiative. Because if you look across Africa, most of our airports will reach their capacity by 2020. Uh, I am really, really very happy and the initiative uh, from our Honorable Minister, Hadi Sirika. And the ICAO. <laughs> and ICAO is unbelievable. And to think that here you have the President of ICAO being a Nigerian and Honorable Minister for, uh, aviation. I mean, aviation uh, in Nigerian. And, and the then bring in... of Afkak. Nigeria. And then bringing the entire world into Abuja. And mind you, mind you, the first time this kind of meeting would take place outside Montreal, Canada. Exactly. The very first time. It's, it's, un Nigeria. it's unbelievable. It's awesome. And uh, we should be proud of this event. And of course, I am recommending that we should not leave any stone unturned. How did they go for the tourism as we said? It's have to be by one means. And the fastest means to bring people to connect people to one point is by the means of transportation. And that is the fastest one is aviation, which is the air transportation. And that is why for everything to develop, as far as tourism is concerned, is a means of enhanced financial capacity, build up a relationship with the entire world. For people to come to your country, it drives a lot of security, compliance and confidence in people. And that will grow your economy. So I believe sincerely that the government on this side should look more to this opportunity today that the whole world, the global village comes to Nigeria as one box. So it's a wonderful thing that's ever happened. Despite its cross-cutting nature and multiple links to other economic sectors, air transport received a mere 4.2 percent that's about 4.6 billion US dollars of the total official development assistance ODA provided by all donors for economic infrastructure and services for the past decade 2005 to 2013. In comparison, road transport was allocated a share of 54.7%, which amounts to 60.9 billion US dollars. 
From this panel, Mr. Yong Wang is the Vice President, China Africa Development Fund, the CAD Fund, while Mr. Shinji Matsui is a representative on the Council of Aikau, Japan, focal point of TCAD. They clearly laid down the various foreign assistance platforms and partnerships to mobilize resources for infrastructure development in Africa, such as Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TCAD, and Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC. And if I may, on this uh, great occasion, to suggest that in the past couple of years, we have to do a lot. We have to do a lot to, uh, we call it, efforts on three-party cooperation for investment on African markets. That is to say we will cooperate with other international institutions or other investment firms in other countries like we have a very good collaboration with World Bank, IMF, uh, and IFC under World Bank Group, uh, Defeat from UK, and uh, Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation, and also we have uh, discussed a joint fund with Kuwait uh, Investment Authority. In one word, we would like to mobilize every resources to go with us together to make more investment, direct investment to African markets. For particularly uh, aviation sector, we have successfully invested in Ghana AWA uh, uh, Airlines with a quite successful investment project. Uh, now we are going to do the second phase, that is we will enlarge the fleet and we will not only to uh, manage the domestic airlines, but also for international airlines uh, from Ghana to the neighboring African countries. It took at six last year, Japan pledged to invest 30 billion US dollars financed under public-private partnership in various national and regional needs, including measures to develop quality infrastructure for the future of Africa. Some recent developments in the aviation field are also described on, on the information I mentioned. There is an ongoing plan until 2020, receiving, for example, 1,000 youth of Africa so far from Nigeria, Niger, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and etc. More to study for engineering and other master degrees of universities and work as an intern at companies in Japan. So, for example, if your country can make an airport control officer and other aviation regulators a secure and attractive professional career in the future, that will make a difference in increasing aviation portfolio and the professionals. To drive the message home, Cecilia Depar reveals that a word indeed is enough for the wise. For the information of uh, distinguished delegates, we just had the first ever air show in West Africa, in Ghana. It was hugely successful, and I'm sure some of us here were able to attend. This is one plus for giving uh, priority to the aviation sector. It also has a vision our policy has a vision also to make the Kotoka International Airport in our capital Accra the hub for the West African region. As I speak, we have 37 airlines that operate in the airport with 10 being cargo. We also have a new terminal building coming up, which will be finished in the first quarter of 2018 next year, which can take 5 million passengers and it can process 1,280 passengers per hour. This is uh, really incredible. It has a space to even take a, a 380 uh, aircraft. So we are doing all these things to speed up the growth in aviation, to aid development both in investment, trade, tourism as well. And one interesting thing is we are also looking at opening up the country to Ghanaians as well, because we need to let them travel in comfort. We are reviving our airstrips as well as our helipads to make sure that we even introduce a helicopter service 
for sh uh, short haul uh, trips. It's the only way to go. Um, we are also talking to other sister countries to make sure we partner with them to provide a new, uh, I wouldn't mention the country's name yet, a new system of building cheaper airports to be able to also handle light aircraft. So we are on track. After reviewing a draft text and taking into account discussions and deliberations during the previous sessions, the forum adopted a declaration and plan of action for aviation infrastructure development in Africa. Well, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers, as we say in aviation, it looks like, uh, to me, CAV OK, as far as these uh, proceedings are concerned. Um, therefore, uh, can we have somebody to move for the adoption of this declaration? Anybody? I wish to set in motion put on the floor by the Minister for Congo. Yes, that's the Minister for Aviation of Nigeria signs the documents on behalf of the other ministers to be deposited at the EU. Thank you. Of the Honorable Minister of State, Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, championed this arrow-headed session. Um, ladies and gentlemen, with your kind information, Honorable Ministers, we propose that this declaration be known as the Abuja Declaration. The hosting of the ICAO event by Nigeria will go a long way in not only shoring up the image of the country, but also attracting global investors who prior to now had reservations about aviation business in the country. To say the hosting of the event by Nigeria will greatly open up the country's aviation sector to the outside world may not be an over-exaggeration as seen in the careful packaging of the theme of the conference financing the development of aviation infrastructure. Coming at a time the domestic airlines are faced with the challenge of aircraft financing from aircraft manufacturers and financial institutions. When IKEA decided that it will honor Nigeria was hosting of this IRF, I took a deep breath. So, so, wow. Of course, because of the animosity of the weight behind the responsibility to host the entire world in your country. And of course, because of the tons and tons of intellectual depth of participants and their commitment and the resolve and the sheer size of industry experts, financiers, and manufacturers, etc. I feel that this honor done Nigeria will not be a waste. This declaration will be pursued with all the vigor that it requires. It's an important item on the table of His Excellency, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mahmoud Buhari, and the government of Nigeria. We will do everything that we can to ensure that we continue to support aviation activities and the promotion of the development of aviation and transportation in general. As part of our closing IWAF 3 remarks, ICAO Secretary General Dr. Fang Liu remarked that ICAO would redouble its efforts to enhance and develop tools, analyses and services to support governments in identifying their aviation deficiencies and infrastructure gaps. She further called on the attending states to align and integrate their aviation infrastructure programs based on a balanced development approach, one which includes multimodal transport and related urban planning initiatives. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the government and the people of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria, in particular for His Excellency Minister Senator Hadi Siraka for hosting this very first IWAF held in the Akio region and to re express Akio's deep appreciation to the African Union Commission, the African Development Bank, and the Planning and Coordinating Agency of the AU's new partnership for Africa's development 
for being such generous and effective partners on this year's event. On that note, may I extend a very big thank you again to all for your participation and enthusiasm, and most of all for your participation and partnership on ACU's many global priorities. I look forward to your participation at the next IWAF in 2018 and wish you all safe travel home. We say big kudos to the Federal Ministry of Transportation, especially our Honorable Minister of State Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, and his entire team. Another big kudos to the President Aikayo, because we're told this is the very first time that this mega world forum will be taking place outside Canada. And the very first time, we're happy to have experienced it here in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. The program is still towards the greater Nigeria. And I remain your anchor on Motai on Motisha. Next week promises to be yet another incisive and interesting one. God bless you. <laughs>